So, uh, last day we have discussed up to this, uh, we have uh, redefined the transfer characteristics of uh, a cascode uh, amplifier, a common source stage uh, followed by a common gate stage. Now, uh, today we would like to study the uh, corresponding output distance provided by this uh, cascode amplifier. So, to start with, let me just uh, once again draw the circuit diagram for a common source, common gate, cascade. So this is your common source stage. Suppose the MOS is M1, input is applied at the gate terminal, output is obtained from the train. Now this output is fed to the second stage. This is a common gate stage, which is having some bias voltage Vb, and suppose the output of the common gate stage is obtained from the train terminal and the output resistance is Rd. So from here you are taking the final output P out. And suppose this is the internal intermediate voltage that is Vx. So the second MOS is M2. So the second MOS is acting as the common gate. The first MOS M1 is acting as common source. And their combination is a common source, common gate, cascade, or cascode. Okay. So, what will be the output uh, resistance provided by this stage? So, whenever I say output resistance, so let's now consider only this part. Forget about the resistance RT. Consider only this part. This enter thing. This is the common source, common gate, cascade. Right? We would like to find out the output resistance of this common source, common gate, cascade. So you have to identify which is my output terminal. Output terminal is a D2. D2. Train 2 of, uh, I mean the second uh, of the MOS2. Right? D2. And uh, obviously in order to find out the output resistance, uh, you need to make all the independent Right? So, let's draw the uh, small signal model first. How does it look like? So this is your gate 1, source 1, drain 1, for the MOS M1. Between gate to source, suppose this voltage, let it be say V1, and between drain to source, you have G M V1, okay? Any other element? between G1 and S1, R01, R1 should be there between G1 and S1, that is R01, okay. Then D1 is connected to source 2, S2, okay. So let's draw, so D1 is nothing but your S2, yes I am coming to that, D1 is equal to S2. Then between G2 and S2, suppose this is a G2 gate 2, between G2 and S2, suppose the voltage is say V2 for example. So this voltage is V2 and between D2 and S2, you have obviously GM2 V2, let me just place it over here. This is your S2. Is there anything apart from this GM2 V2? RO2, R2 should be there because this is your train 2 D2 terminal. You should have RO2. Anything else? RD1. 
No, forget about RT. I am just considering this one inside this. But he's got the ground level. But any any other element between D2 and S2? Yes, we have to include the body element. We have to include because uh, for the MOS M1, source is connected to ground. Bulk is connected to ground for MOS, so VSB voltage is equal to zero for uh, MOS M1. But for MOS M2, the source is not connected to ground. Source is ha having some voltage, say Vx. So you have to consider the body effect here for the second MOS, and so therefore you have this GMB. What is that voltage? VBS. GMB VBS. VBS2. Right? Now let's try to identify the different uh, terminals. What about the uh, source potential S1? This is connected to AC ground. R ground or DC ground. So this is grounded. What about G1? Ground because you have applied some input voltage over here, but whenever you are calculating the output is this uh, independent voltage source should be not inactive. So that's why, so for the calculation of the output resistance only, you have to make G1 inactive, or G1 is connected to ground. So this is ground rate, not during the calculation of your uh, gain. G2 uh, What about G2? G2 is connected to, I mean the gate 2 is connected to some voltage GB. So in small signal model, it should be connected to. Okay. And then you identify what is my terminal. The terminal is the D2, between D2 and ground you apply some voltage external voltage now you apply some external voltage between d2 and ground you apply some external voltage between this two terminal vx and suppose the current being drawn is ix so the ratio of vx to ix will give you output resistance now before doing that Let's try to identify what is your uh, VBS2. What is that VBS2 here? VS2. VS2 is how much? No, forget about VS. If I just observe this one, if I observe this one, VBS2. You have two terminal. You have two uh, voltage dependent current source, GM VGS and GMV VBS. So GM2 V2. Why V2? It is basically the VGS2. It is basically the VGS2. And what about this VBS2? What about VBS2? What is VS2 here? Try to identify what is VS2. What is VS2 here? The potential at the source terminal 2. Source 2. What is that? Minus of V2? It's minus of V2. This is minus of V2. And what is VBS2? You know that VB2 is equal to ground, that is 0. Body is connected to ground, VB2 is equal to 0. So, what is VBS2 then? Simply V2. Right? Mm. For N mass, for N mass, the body is always, always connected to ground, and for P mass, it is connected to VDD. Okay. So instead of writing VBS, what I can write, this is basically GMB, rather GMB2, V2. It's basically, I should write GMB2. Okay. So, now we have to identify, so the total current that is uh, flowing through this combination is Ix and it is having three components, one is GMB2 V2, second one is GMB2 V2 and third current is flowing through RO2. So what is the current flowing through RO2? So that current, if I call say I2 for example, then this I2 is Ix minus GM2 V2, GM V2 V2, right? Is it okay? Then, what is the current? Uh, Achha, another point. Uh, now, uh, now, uh, yeah. Let's take a look at this V1. So, what is that voltage V1? That is zero because uh, the V1 and S1 both of them are connected to. AC ground, so this is uh, absent basically, right? 
So what about the current flowing through R1? This comes summation of these three. Gm2 V2 plus Gm2 V2 plus I2. That is basically Ix. So this current which is flowing through R1 is Ix. Okay. So now you try to apply QVF. So Vx is how much? So Vx is basically the current flowing through R2 to I, I2 R2. I2 R2 plus Ix R1. So what is that? I2 R2. That means Ix times R2 minus Gm2 plus Gmv2 times V2 times R2 plus Ix times R1. Okay. Then you have to find out the. Okay, let me. Anyway, let me take a new page over there. So what you are getting? Yeah, Vx to be better if I can. Uh, this one. Okay, so Ix times R1 plus R2, right? Connect uh, V2 in terms of Vx. Uh, Ix R1 is equal to your uh, minus Ix R1 is equal to your V2 because that is equal to S2. So, but here, uh, so V2 is equal to minus of, I should write PS2 there, PS2 is equal to I R1 that is equal to minus minus V2, right? So minus V2 is equal to Ix R1. So plus GM2 plus GMV2 times Ix R01 R02 plus you have this Ix R01. Oh, I have already included this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Vx is equal to this much. So if we just take the ratio Vx by Vx upon Ix, that will give you the uh, output resistance R of R out that is equal to Vx upon Ix that is given by R1 plus R plus Gm2 plus Gmv2 times R1, R2. Is it a familiar expression? Hopefully you have seen this expression. What I am getting R out is equal to R01 plus R02 plus Gm2 plus Gmv2 times R1 R2 that is equal to 1 plus Gm2 plus Gmv2 
times R O two, R O one plus R O two. Is it a familiar expression? Hopefully yes. You have already. So if you incorporate body weight, then G M two and G M two is added with G M. Now we have already seen that kind of circuit. So what is that? What is the present circuit? A present circuit looks something like that. This is grounded. This is uh, under AC model. This is also grounded. Okay, forget about this one. A common source stage here. A common gate stage here. And this is my output terminal. The R out is obtained at this particular point, <laughs> right? So you understand it's a common source, common gate cascade. If you even if even if you uh, uh, study this one, this common source, common gate cascade, when you discuss about the common source stage, common source stage with degeneration. During the calculation of the output resistance, you have got the same small signal model. I can visualize this upper MOS as the common source amplifying device corresponding to the common source stage, and the lower MOS as a current source, as a current source which degenerates. I mean, you have a source degeneration RS. Now that resistance can be replaced by current source. Can you remember the expression for the output resistance whenever the common source stage is degenerated? One plus Z over O multiplied with R S plus common source stage is degeneration. The output resistance is something like that. It was like common source stage with degeneration. The expression for R out was one plus. If I just forget about this. Your R. Forget about R O one because I have only one. Something like that. Now one plus G M R O multiplied with R S plus R. So that time this was so that resistance was R S. Remember, okay, this is there is a resistance connected. Between the source to the AC ground, isn't it a common source? How does it look like? You have RS there. Input is applied at the gate, so uh, during the out, we make it inactive or connected to AC ground, and we observe the R out at this particular point. What is the expression? One plus G M R O. That time you don't have any. We have not considered uh, this uh, body effect. So one plus G M R O times R S plus. R. If I don't have R S, what is that? Simply R O. If I don't have R S, if R S is zero, that means if source is connected to ground, the expression was simply R O. And if I incorporate this uh, R S, then the expression was one plus G M R O times R S plus R O. Now that was the common source stage with degeneration. Now surprisingly, while calculating the output resistance for a cascade, I mean common source common gate cascade, which is a cascade amplifier, surprisingly I've got the same small signal model. So this amplifying device over here, this MOS, this MOS, and this MOS, they can be thought to be identical. And this resistance R S is represented by This common source amplifier, this one. Okay. Then now, if I go back to the circuit, I mean to the expression, it is one plus. Okay, you become GM two plus GMB two, GM of the amplifying device, GM of the amplifying device. Now this time, while calculating the while calculating the output resistance of the for this cascade amplifier, the common source stage. It looks like the common source stage is acting as as a load as a R S, and here the actual uh, amplifying device is uh, nothing but your uh, the common gate amplifier. I mean the this upper MOS M2. So the expression says that it should be one plus G M2 plus G M P2, the mutual conductance of the second amplifier, the upper amplifier, upper MOS. 
1 plus gm2 plus gm2 times RO2 whole multiplied with the output resistance of the degeneration resistance that is RS there. So, this, this is nothing but your RO1 that gets added with the RO2. So, actually, the circuits are different. In one case, you have the common source with degeneration. In other case, you have a common source, common gate cascade. But when it comes to the calculation of the output resistance, we have arrived at the same expression. Is that one clear? So, the advantage of this uh, uh, cascade amplifier, if I just uh, take a look at the your uh, output resistance value. What is the advantage of this cascode, cascode stage? Change efficient Is it the product of two gains or two gains? No, in order of the shift of GM, it is the gain that is the only GM1. Okay, the input resistance is equal to infinite. Because if I apply the input at and the gate. Ah, this is so while calculating this R out, we have just we have just neglected this RT part, right? We have just neglected RT. I don't know which RT is one, which load resistance should be there. RT is the RT will be governed by RT. But I don't know. Sometimes I have to connect this combination to some other load resistance. Now sometimes, uh, so for here, what is your input? Input is infinite. Input is infinite. But what about the output resistance? Is increased. Right? But if you just compare this one with your common source resistance regeneration, do you find any difference? A common source resistance regeneration where the degeneration is done, this RS is, re is represented by means of some uh, current source load. Simple current and source load. Yes, so they just compare this one with the common source with degeneration, surprising the input and the output resistance being the same. A common source with it is an input resistance infinite. What is the output resistance? This much 1 plus GMB, GM2 plus GMB2 times R2 plus multiplied R1 plus. So, I should go for the common source common gate cascade or cascode. Because you are getting the same input, same output resistance. The gain. What about the gain? Ultimately, you understand that for this common source common gate cascade, the first stage, the first common source amplifier, what was the gain? GM minus GM times uh, the total resistance C between the drain and the AC ground. So you have one resistance from this drain to AC ground in the form of RO1 and the other resistance is nothing but the resistance, input resistance of the common gate stage. What is that? 1 by GM, close to 1 by GM. So then minus of GM divided by GM2. And you have the same current flowing, same ID flowing. So this ratio is becoming... So this common source stage doesn't provide any gain. The gain is ultimately obtained by the common gate stage. It's not the product of this GM, GMRT, two products, it's not like that. It's basically the, the gain provided by the common gate stage. So, in terms of gain, you don't have advantage. In terms of input and output, you don't have such an advantage. Then, why should you go for this uh, common source common gate basket? If I compare this common source common gate cascade with your common source with regeneration, where the regeneration is done by means of uh, a current source load, so input resistance infinite, output resistance this much. In terms of gain, that advantageous part. Stable. So, there are several attributes of the amplifier. Several attributes. One is the gain. Gain of this, this common source uh, stage with degeneration, remember? 
Or the expression? GMRT on plus GMRT on plus GMRT. Is there an advantage about there? What do you feel? No, let's assume that it's the same kind of spring. No? So you have same thing. Gate the gate. Gate is applied to the gate. Gate is the first mass. That is the gene of the gene. For a common source, common gate task gate. Right. Ultimately, the overall gate is identified by the gate states. Isn't it? For a, for a common source, for this one, for this one, common source states with degeneration, applied the input over there, V in, this is the supply, VDD, RT, RS, this is V out. So the gain expression, if I consider the mod, this is simply GMRT by 1 plus GMRS, right? Now here for the common source, common gate cascade, as you understand that common source stage, the gain by the common source stage is approximately equal to or mod if I consider, that is unity. Why? Because you have minus of GMRT, if I consider the mod is basically GMRT. What is RT? RT is the equivalent resistance seen between the drain and the AC ground. So two paths, one is, uh, one is provided by this common source stage amplifier that is RO1. And second one is basically the input resistance of the common gate state that is 1 upon GM, one, almost close to 1 upon GM. We have the RO2 part as well. So if I take this uh, ratio minus GM1 upon GM2, it's uh, unity again, you have a common, so common source stage is acting like a buffer here. Yeah. As you have started in your electronic circuits course also. The common emitter, common uh, base, cascade. They are also common emitter doesn't provide any, any such gain. If you, if you use a common emitter in isolation, you have some gain, GMRC, minus GMRC. But if you use a common emitter with a common, so, uh, common, emitter with a common base, so at that point of time, this common emitter acts like a buffer only. Sometimes here, the suppose input resistance is very large and you cannot connect uh, this large input resistance to common gate stage, which is having a very low input resistance. So that, that's why this common source stage is acting like a buffer. So here, if, if your input is V in, so at the point of time Vx, it is a minus V, something like that, close to minus V, not such gain. Then, the common gate stage. So for the common gate stage, what is the output resistance for the common gate? Now we forget about everything. What is the output resistance of the common gate stage? A simple common gate stage, what is the output resistance? Common gate stage. Typically what is the? Uh, not, not R out. Only, only common, forget about, the, forget about this common source, only common gate in isolation. So here, what you are getting, here, so if, if the input over here is V in, actually I applied V in over there, and there the input is, I mean, uh, this is Vx, which is equal to minus V in. Right? And then this is applied to uh, the common gate stage. Okay? Then what about the uh, gain of this common gate stage? No, if, if the input is V over there, you have only phase difference now, a minus uh, one phase difference, because gain is almost equal to one. Common source states, the gain is almost equal to one. Right. Okay. So, what is the output is in a common gate states? A simple common gate states. RO. Okay, and then in parallel with that, we have some RD. Because RD is the externally connected resistance, right? So eventually it is controlled by RD. So what is your gain? So overall gain is becoming like gain times RD. A minus, let's say minus 10 or something. 
Minus if I consider this overall combination because from common source from V into Vx there is a minus sign and Vx to Vr there is almost close to G over T. Right. So now if you compare this one with, with this one, any advantage? GMRT there and here is GMRT by 1 plus GMRS independent of GM. But still you have uh, advantage in terms of, so although we have not uh, discussed this one, uh, you have advantage of the, the frequency response characteristics. If you can remember what you studied in your uh, electron circuit course. For common emitter amplifier, common emitter amplifier, you have moderate gain, moderate input resistance, moderate output resistance, and pretty small value, low value. Because of the, what is that effect called? Can you remember? Miller effect. Yes. From input to output, there is a there is a capacity. Uh, right. So, because 1 minus A times C mu and that A was negatively large, minus 20, minus 30. So, capacitance value, the effective capacitance increased. So, which controls the speed of the device, the uh, speed of this, uh, uh, this enter amplifier. What is our quality frequency Yes. So, here also we will do the same same. So whenever we move to the last unit. Huh? Small signal model ah, you are trying to know which where, where are the capacitors present. Where are the capacitors present and the effect of those capacitors. So, so to transfer function No, it can be done by several ways. Either you consider the corresponding position of the, the capacitor, you find out the input side what is the effective RC time constant, output side what is the effective RC time constant, and based on that you uh, just find out the corresponding uh, cut of frequency. Or what you can do is that, which is much more tedious job, that you go to this entire transfer function calculation. You calculate the transfer function and from that you just... It's not 35 marks. Now let me uh, move to the, the last part of our discussion. So having discussed the uh, common source stage, common gate stage, common source, common gate cascade or cascade amplifier. Now this is the last topic of this unit that is a common drain amplifier. You have already studied the common collector in your electron circuits course? No, not so. The emitter form. Right? Now here also we have the same naming. It's a common drain amplifier. It's called source follower. So input is applied at the at the gate end. So drain is connected to power supply VDD, and you are sensing the output at the source end with some source resistance present over here. That is RS. We will do the calculation, the quantitative analysis. But before that, let's try to identify what happens uh, if I just uh, change the input by some amount. Suppose input is applied at the gate terminal at point A sensed at point B, that is the source terminal, right? Remember what you have studied in, in, in your electron circuit course. That I have seen that if I apply the input at the base and if I sense the output at the emitter, eventually this emitter output was the, the input provided at the base. Well, when the co collector is connected to the power supply PCC. Now what happens here? Now, now suppose at point A you have applied some input V in and suppose this V in is increased by some amount, so let it be say delta V in. Okay, it has been increased by some amount. So the gate voltage is increased. I don't know what happens to the source voltage. Let's assume that it is constant. 
it's fixed. Let's assume it is fixed. Now, if it is fixed, the not of the gate source difference that is increased because gate is increased, source is fixed, so gate source increased. Right? I am assuming that the device is on. Device is on and this gate source difference is greater than the threshold voltage, so the device is on. Now, if VGS is more, source is fixed, gate is increased, so VGS is more, you have more current. And if you have more current, that current is flowing through RS. So, our previous assumption that uh, the point V is held at, or the source is held at the constant potential is false. This proof to be false. So, the source potential, uh, I mean the potential point V, will also increase by some amount. Now, if this enhancement is by some delta V at the input side, and let's assume that the enhancement in the output side or the source end is delta V out, the ratio of these two, delta V out upon delta V in, will give you the expression for the voltage gain. Okay. And the second thing is that there is no such phase difference, unlike the common source amplifier. There is no phase difference. If there is an increase in the terminal, uh, potential at the gate terminal, then uh, there will be increase at the source end as well. That means what I can say that the source potential is following what is happening at the gate end. Voltage at the source end, it follows what is happening at the gate end. So, in that sense, I can call this particular configuration as a common drain or Circuit. That means my output of the circuit follows what is happening at the source end. That is a qualitative discussion. Now, let's have a look at the, okay, so what about the, uh, the small signal model? So, uh, small signal model, so it's a very simplistic model. I have just uh, forget about this uh, RO part, right? And also your, uh, what else? Body effect. I've neglected it. Right? So you have uh, gate to source, this voltage V1, you have GM V1 present over there, and you have RS, source resistance. Right? Input is applied at the gate, drain is connected to AC ground. AC ground, not DC ground. DC wire is connected to VDD. Okay? Two simplification here. One is lambda is equal to zero. And second one, gamma equal to zero. That means none of the second order effects have been considered. Neither body effect nor uh, the channeling modulation. So, in that case, what you get? Uh, what is I out? I out is nothing but so if this voltage here obtained at the source end, so this is basically the V out. So, I out is equal to uh, V out upon RS. And uh, what is the relation between uh, V1 and uh, V out? If you apply KVL there, so, V in is equal to this V1 plus this V out, right? So, V1 plus V out and what is V1? So, this kind is GM times V1 and this GM times V1 is equal to I out. So, V out, so V1 is equal to I out upon GM, right? And accordingly, if you just uh, substitute this value, then you are getting V in is equal to V out upon GMRS plus V out. And if you do the rest of the calculations, then the voltage gets GMRS by 1 plus GMRS. GMRS by 1 plus GMRS. So you have buffer, right? Yes, it acts like a buffer. GMRS by 1 plus GMRS. So, typically your GMRS product is larger than 1. And then the maximum of this voltage gain could be unity, but it cannot exceed the unity because in the numerator side you have GMRS denominator 1 plus GMRS. So at max, at max this gain can be unity. But it is always less than unity. Either it can approach unity or it is always less than unity. Okay? So GMRS by 1 plus GMRS can also be written like this RS upon 1 by GM plus RS. Why? Because sometimes you don't have a simple resistance over there. So that, at that point of time you have to identify what is the uh, what is the resistance connected to the source terminal to the AC ground? And then you can relate or you can simply write the expression of this voltage gain without uh, going into the detailed uh, small single analysis. Okay, and there is no minus thing. The only one difference between the uh, uh, and the common source stage with regeneration. For common source stage with regeneration, it was like there is a minus in outside and then RD upon 1 by GM plus RS. The total resistance seen between the drain and the AC ground divided by 1 by GM plus the total relation seen between the source and the AC. Now this time you don't have any minus sign here, you have only plus and the, the same resistance here we are 
getting RACR also, RACR also. Okay. Input range is infinite. You have applied the input at the gate end. What about the output resistance? And that, that's the most important thing. What is the output resistance? Output resistance. The same model you have considered. You have considered the same model. Then what else? We consider this to be my externally applied test voltage and uh, corresponding voltage is Vx and the current drawn by the circuit is Ix and while it's a uh, output resistance calculation you have to make this uh, input uh, voltage inactive, right? Then what is the relation between your V1 and Vx? This is basically V1 is equal to minus Vx. This V1 plus minus, here it is plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. So V1 plus Vx is equal to V1 equal to minus Vx. Is it okay? And then uh, what is the current which is flowing through RS? You have two components. You have two components. This, co this current, KCL here, this current plus this current. There is no other way here. So I out is equal to GMP1 plus Ix. So from that, what is your Ix? Ix is equal to I out minus GMP1. And what is I out? I out is nothing but your Vx upon Rs. Then ultimately, this uh, Ix upon Vx is given by Gm plus 1 by Rs. The two, so the conduct is output conductance is the sum of two conductances, Gm and 1 upon Rs. So what about the output resistance? It is basically the parallel combination between Rs and 1 upon Gm. So eventually, typically Rs could have been large, few kilo ohms say for example, and 1 by Gm is small. And then ultimately, this uh, parallel combination Rs and uh, in parallel with 1 upon Gm, this is governed by 1 upon Gm. Eventually, you are getting the same output resistance what you have got as an input resistance for a common gate amplifier. This is infinite, output resistance is equal to very small. Just like what you studied in case of your common collector amplifier, emitter follower. High input resistance and low output resistance. Here also high input resistance infinite and low output resistance. Again, yeah. Actually, this circuit is not used for gear. Buffer. Buffer. Voltage buffer. Voltage buffer. The same thing that you have studied. 